Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and welcome to another review of a LEGO Dream Set. This is the Fantastical Treehouse. It is the home base for the Dream Chasers. It's seen a lot throughout the TV show, and it also has a ton of rebuild opportunities to change around the look and feel of the buildings themselves. This is a really fun headquarter set for the brand new LEGO Dreams line, and definitely stay tuned to Duck Bricks because not only have I published a mega review on every single one of the brand new LEGO Dream sets, but I also will be publishing individual reviews of each and every one of the sets themselves so stay tuned if you want to see those and without further ado let's get right into the review Okay, here we have set number 71461. This is the Fantastical Treehouse. It comes with 1,257 pieces and retails for 110 US dollars or 105 euros, which roughly translates to $112, making the price of this in the US and Europe about the same. Now this actually is quite a lot of pieces for the price and is also one of the better priced LEGO Dream sets we've gotten all wave, which is really cool how some of the larger sets actually are pretty fairly priced. One thing I want to say about Dreams before we start is that the instruction manuals are actually probably some of the coolest parts of the entire set. Hear me out, it's because if you look at the manual itself, the artwork is completely replaced by specialized almost comic style art, and as you're building the set, as you progress through the build itself, there are different colored pages to signify what types of things you're building, and to really tell a story throughout the entire journey of creating this model. For instance, you can see some nice artwork on the front booklet here, as you go in you've got some artwork of the characters themselves as one of the characters Mrs. Castillo begins to plant a seed which as you can see will eventually grow into a massive tree and it's very cool because as you actually progress through the book itself there's a lot of different pieces of artwork to really make it seem like things are just being built and sprout up so as you're building it especially if you're a kid building the set for the first time it really feels like you are actually telling a story throughout the build process itself. This is something that they sort of did throughout Ninjago Core, which is one of the kind of early lines of Ninjago that they did a few years ago, which they basically were telling stories through the pages of the instructions, but this is a completely different level, where it really encourages the building process, showcasing how the minifigures of the set are coming together to be able to create what you're building. Now, like most of the LEGO Dream sets, this set actually does have an alternate build to it. There's a little bit of a side build for the villains, but you actually can choose how you want to build the set itself, and here are the two options. One of them is a set that's focused a little bit more on just living spaces. You have Mateo, Izzy, and Mrs. Castillo's houses up here, which really don't have any weapons on them. They're really just for fun. Whereas the other side completely converts it into defensive platforms, where for Mateo's, you've got kind of a missile launcher on the side. Izzy's has got rockets that shoot down from below. And even Mrs. Castillo's has a launcher for some of the food that she's firing. And overall, it's really interesting seeing how there are multiple different ways to build basically the same exact concept for the set, depending on what you want to do with it. So for instance, you can build it in the standard treehouse form here, which is kind of just the living area for the minifigures themselves, or you can kind of put it into a defensive mode right here where you're fending off the creatures. I just think it's really cool how you can choose what type of scene you want to portray just by rebuilding a couple of different things with the set itself. Of course, we can now focus in on the actual build of the set. I want to briefly talk about the minifigures, but we've been talking about them throughout many of the other LEGO Dreams reviews, so I'm really only going to focus on some of the ones that are special for the set. It doesn't come with any exclusive minifigures. A lot of these do appear in the other sets, but some of them are fairly rare. Mrs. Castillo here is one of the specialized new characters created for LEGO Dreams. She is featuring a new mold for an older woman kind of hunched over, which is a really interesting one. You have a dual molded brown and this lighter aqua color for the blue being utilized for the arms. Also, the arms themselves are mounted on Technic pins, so it's really interesting. It is a shame she can't bend her hands though, so you can only kind of have them be up and down, but it's not that big of a deal. It's really interesting how much effort went into developing Mrs. Castillo as a character, especially because she's not really honestly that prominent in the show itself. Even throughout all 20 episodes, she doesn't really seem to be aware of the dream world to a significant degree, so I kind of find it interesting how they actually managed to create a specialized mold for kind of a one-off character, but hey, you know what? I'll take it because it certainly is one of the more interesting character designs we've gotten for Dreams so far. 
Izzy and Mateo are in their fully kitted up versions of themselves, which have full armor and weapons, which are very cool to see. Izzy here has one of the coolest designs out of any of the LEGO Dreams characters, in my opinion, sporting this really nice, radiant, transparent, opalescent glitter hairpiece, which is so cool, mixed in with transparent pink and blue. The armor piece from the Praetorian Guards has been recolored in this lavender color, which is very nice, and she even has a dual molded sword that is specialized in gold and trans blue to really evoke that warrior aspect. Plus, she has dual molded legs, a skirt cloth kawa, that is all really cool to have fully detailed minifigures included in this set. Mateo, on the other hand, is also fully detailed. He comes with his pencil sword right here, which is a specialized build they've specifically introduced for Mateo himself. He also has a brand new hairpiece, which first debuted in black for the Icons of Play set, but is really specifically created for Dreams. It has a nice green streak in it. Two different facial expressions, which you can see right here, a fabric cape, which is just the nice, very flexible material, and dual molded legs as well, showing they spared no expense when creating these characters. On the villainous side of things, we actually have a couple of different villains to menace the heroes. The main one, at least the main minifigure one, is the Night Hunter here. The Night Hunter is one of the most interesting characters from LEGO Dreams, and it's great to have him as a minifigure here. I really love the way the scarf is done. It is a very similar material to the Nightmare King's cape, where you have this rubberized material that they also use on stuff like Batman 1989 to show this kind of claw reaching out from the side of the Nightmare or the Night Hunter's scarf, which is so interesting. I like the way the face is done as well. He's got kind of a scar going alongside his face, but overall keeping a very mysterious overall appearance. It's a really cool looking figure, almost Western or cowboy inspired for this bounty hunter like character. And I just think it's definitely one of the coolest ones to come out of the villains lineup of Lego Dreams so far. We also get a couple of characters utilizing the new smaller body element, which was introduced for LEGO Dreams. The first one is a bit of a strange one because this is supposed to be Z-Blob, although in the show he never actually really appears as a humanoid. He basically is only just a little blob, which I honestly think is cuter. I think Z-Blob works better as just a little blob element and not a humanoid figure. He does look a little bit strange being a humanoid with arms and hands, but it's not that big of a deal. It's just I think I personally just prefer the recolored Baraki eye that they included in the Nightmare Shark Show. He does, however, have this long vine which he can use to kind of grapple to other places like we did see in the show itself. And also utilizing the body is a new mushroom character. This is just a denizen of the dreamland, so you just have a generic mushroom figure right here. As well as one of the Nightmare King's creatures, this is specifically one of the Grimspawn, one of the three main ones, so it's really cool to get him. Just a really funny looking character with a gigantic head using the big thick head introduced for Thanos in the Infinity Saga sets, and a really, really small body. Overall though, the main focus of the set is on the main actual build itself, and almost all of the budget went directly into making the treehouse, with just a little bit of extra effort spent into creating a couple of different side characters just to use across the set itself. This right here is a walking mailbox character. It kind of reminds me of some of the stuff that we would see with like Junkbot in the original LEGO games. It's just a fun little character. You've got mail on the inside. Also kind of reminds me of Flappy the mailbox from LEGO Club. So there's a lot of just fun little references in here, but he has just little robotic arms. You have the mail indicator that can go up and down, propeller on the top of the head. So I guess this one can fly up to the different levels and even foot articulation. So overall, just a nice, cute little brick built character. And I believe those are new prints for the eyes as well. The more interesting brick build character to me is a mini version of the cage monsters. I really like how you don't actually have to buy the larger cage monster set which you can see right here, to be able to get this very prominent and menacing creature that was seen throughout the series. This is the larger version of the set, and this is kind of a baby version, which is introduced in the treehouse. They're essentially supposed to be just the same creature, but just two different concepts and scales of executing it. And I like it because not only does it allow you a way to get this prominent creature in a different set without having to buy the dedicated set, but it also makes the actual treehouse feel a lot larger in comparison to this creature. Because if one of the cave monsters, or the cage monsters, is only basically going up to here, this just feels a lot larger when you have this in relation to it. So I think that is actually really Really, really cool. 
Lastly, there is a smaller side build for the villains as well. This is actually something that you can place on the ground, but you can kind of set it aside as well. And this is just a little bit of an evil looking monster plant, kind of like a piranha plant type thing that can chomp open and close to trap any unwary travelers inside of its jaws. So just a fun little thing to play around with there. But overall, I think it's time to get right into the main build itself because there's actually quite a lot to see here. So for the build of the Fantastical Treehouse, you may notice that this is really giving a lot of LEGO Elves vibes, which I think is a good thing. I think LEGO Elves was one of the best LEGO themes that we got back in the day for the mini doll adventure theme, so really a big fan of that. And I think the only way to tackle this is to start from the bottom and work our way to the top. One thing I do want to specifically point out is that the set also came with an additional sticker set where you had stickers that were not essentially supposed to be going in any particular location, but allowed you to decorate them in different ways. So of course you have like little Izzy signs here. You've got a lot of these little rounded stickers scattered throughout the build just to be able to add on to different aspects of the build itself and I've basically just kind of chosen where to assign these randomly just the way they're supposed to do it. The last time we got that was for Ninjago Prime Empire I believe and as well as Hidden Side got a little bit of those but it's always cool to see LEGO try to experiment with giving kids more options to be more creative. Setting aside the Grim Spawn here, we can take a look at the base of the tree trunk. This obviously very much looks like a tree house, which is really cool. I like how you've got different prices for different mushroom type things here being sold, so you actually have like the dollar sign there, which is interesting. A ton of these flag elements for the Dream Catchers logo or the Dream Chasers logo being utilized on the flags themselves, which given that I had to put on these stickers on three different flags, I kind of do wish that was printed, but it's not that big of a deal. You have a brick built sign with an arrow for the actual dead of the dream realm to maybe be peddling their wares so if you kind of stand up your character there you've got a little spot for him kind of a environment on the base of the tree trunk you can go ahead and climb up to the first level utilizing this ladder to get in through the main door into the treehouse itself and on the side there are just little signs for different areas to go to just referencing like sleep so you have lucid lane snooze street dream drive and siesta avenue so all sorts of just fun stuff to see around Going around this model here, there is a large swing, so you can place a minifigure in the swing and actually swing them back and forth, which is really nice. I feel like every good treehouse needs a swing, so that makes a lot of sense. And one of my favorite details up here is that there is a little bit of a brick-built bird, which you can see just built really nicely. I like how this bird was done overall, kind of just another denizen of the treehouse itself. Rotating around to the back of the build, going back down to the bottom floor, there is a little spot for a bakery, so you have a spot with donuts and cookies to be baked in the oven, which is just a nice little detail. I just like how that's done overall. You have some good detail just going on the way upwards, as well as ladders that you can actually use to access the back buildings. Entering the frontier, there is just a little bit of a screen where I guess you can watch TV, watch Bunchy the Bunny on the TV screen, and as you go on upwards, you go up to Izzy's room, and this is a whole on build. So Izzy's room right here is featuring actually a bed for Izzy, of course, because you gotta have a bed on the inside of this particular build, as it is LEGO Dreams, after all. I like how they've actually managed to include little aspects of the characters in their builds themselves, so you kind of have a poster of Bunchy right there, but this all actually rotates outwards, so you can see this out here is Izzy's room. You actually have a sign that says Izzy on it, which is really nice. Not a ton of interior detail, honestly. There's not a ton of space even to pose minifigures, but you have some detail being added in for some accessories for Izzy herself. And I guess she can get into her main room utilizing kind of this doorway here where you can kind of squeeze through the minifigure to get her into the main building. Now, the interesting thing is that with this set, every single one of the buildings is modular, at least these separatable ones, so you can actually take this off and it's just attached by a single clip element so everything is just done by the clip system so you can really put them on whatever levels you want although if you follow the interior design this is the quote-unquote correct configuration because Izzy's is the second floor, Mateo's is the third, and Mrs. Castillo's is the top. Speaking of Mateo's, you can see Mateo's treehouse right here. I like the brick-built Z-Blob face right here. Of course, you have brick-built slime going down the side, of course, for Z-Blob's character. You have a bit of a stud shooter element up here, this time oriented upwards for fireworks, kind of a similar technique that we saw in the Ninjago Temple of Erjitsu, which also had a stud shooter facing upwards for fireworks. I like how since Mateo is an artist, you have some spray paint cans as well as a large text there that says sleep. And then on his room right here, just make sure you don't knock off the bed there as you're moving it along you can actually see a little bit of a comic for Z-Blob himself which is a nice touch because it just ties into his character in the show and some more spray paint bottles for the artistry itself 
Lastly, you can go on up to the top floor here. Not a ton to see on the top deck, it's kind of just an observation deck for the characters. But as you can see here, this is Mrs. Castillo Station. This is pretty cool because when you push down on this lever, you can launch the disc upward, so that kind of is a launching disc element right there to be able to fire some projectiles upwards and you have some extra ammo on the side. She also is on a rotating stand, so you can have her be overlooking the entire total area of this particular treehouse. And overall, that's pretty much all there is to do in terms of being able to explore the overall interior and exterior of the building itself. Now here's the thing about this build. I actually really, really like the color scheme. Having the leaves be blue was a really inspired choice. And I love the usage of these specially new recolored blue leaf elements to really make the foliage feel compact and make it feel very lush as a treehouse itself. The only thing that is a little bit dubious to me are these elements right here. These brand new dual molded elements were specifically introduced for LEGO Dreams, and I feel like it was a case of LEGO trying to do too much with just one element. And I'm a bit mixed on that, because I always love it when LEGO can make a particular new mold and you can use it for different things. For this set, these are supposed to represent leaves, where you can see they kind of have petals on the side, they're not just supposed to be kind of jet engines like they are for most of the other sets, they clearly are supposed to be leaves with petals, but they're also shaped very much like jet engines, like they clearly are shaped in a particular way that looks like rocket exhaust. They are literally used in that exact color as jet exhaust pieces for the other sets like Mr. Oz's space bus. And I feel like the part design of these pieces was trying to do a little bit too much at the same time. And as a result, I feel like they neither succeed as foliage or jet exhaust because I can't help but see the flame exhaust when they are pointed in a very triangular fashion downwards here but I also can't help but see the leaves when they're actually used as jet exhaust for the other sets. I honestly feel like when trying to do both at once, they didn't really succeed at doing either, and that is a bit of a downside to me. It's not that big of a deal because you can obviously chalk it up to a fantasy tree house, and obviously their leaves are definitely not going to look how things look in the real world, but I do feel like it is a little bit goofy in the way that it's set up, just in terms of having these be dual function pieces. Overall though, I do like the aesthetics of the set, it again feels a lot like a LEGO set that came from LEGO Elves or something like that, which is just so cool, I just like it when LEGO does unique things like this. I definitely feel like some of the other dream sets are at least a bit more interesting to me, I feel like the subject matter of some of the other sets, like the Nightmare Shark Ship and the villain stuff and even the Space Bus, are maybe just a little bit more interesting, but I really do respect what LEGO has done with a build like this, it feels like an evolution of LEGO Friends and LEGO Elves being mixed together with fantasy elements, and I really like the modular aspect of the design, which really emphasizes being able to move around the different components to be able to rearrange the overall layout of this particular build. Overall, for $110, I will have to say that this is probably one of the best valued sets, not just of Dreams, but maybe of the entire year. This is pretty incredible value, like $110 for what you get is really, really good. And I'm honestly really happy with how much this set costs, given how many pieces you get and just how much you can do with it. So while it might not be the most interesting thing to come out of LEGO Dreams for me and I might be personally drawn to some of the other sets, this is still a really strong showing for LEGO Dreams and definitely one of the best price sets out of the entire wave. Alright, and with that we have summed up our look at the Fantastical Treehouse. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of the set, do you like it, do you dislike it, and what do you think of LEGO Dreams as a whole? Thank you all so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon, and bye for now.